have a, a long program today with an amazingly talented people. For the next hour, you're going to hear about some of the exciting work being done right here on our campus, directly from the faculty who are leading it. As you listen to their presentations, I encourage you to think about how the research and development being done here are only part of the process in getting these capabilities into everyone's everyday lives. Then around 10 o'clock, we'll be starting the second half of our program where we'll be joined by industry leaders. Their companies, Zoom and Applied Materials, are not only headquartered here in Silicon Valley, they're directly involved in ensuring that our AI products are vetted, not only for engineering, but also its responsible use. We'll also be joined by the CEO and Vice President of Silicon Valley Leadership Group. SVLG's Responsible AI Working Group brings together some of the region's top companies, policymakers, and universities to promote the responsible deployment of AI. In fall 2018, that was my first semester here at SJSU, we encountered the wildfire that raged across California. So while exploring the power of AI in business, with our undergraduate students, we start to wonder, can we also leverage the power of AI to benefit the humanities? And that is the birthplace of AI for Social Good, an education initiative that aims to encourage students from all different backgrounds to learn AI through a community-engaged lens. Students learn about AI through case studies and labs, identify important social issues in their communities, and propose or prototype AI-powered solutions, and then discuss the ethical implications. Over the past six years, the AI for Social Goods project has been implemented in over 50 classes in more than th in three universities. Over 2,500 students generating over 500 projects. In addition to that, over 30 tech companies, government sectors, and nonprofit organizations have joined us to judge student projects. I think there are three big buckets that can house the bills that we are seeing. And those buckets are transparency. That is, how is AI being used and when is it being used? We're seeing guardrails. That is, rules for, or proposed rules for setting contours around how AI technology is developed and used. And then opportunity. Where can AI be leveraged in the provision of government service for the public good? We're seeing a lot of different proposals around technical standard, uh, standards and content creation. Okay, we're seeing a lot of concerns around content provenance, that is understanding the origins of uh, digital content so people are able to understand where their information uh, is coming from. Then we have the guardrails. These are policies that go to targeted solutions to particular problems. And there are a variety of interesting proposals in here. Perhaps one of the most interesting is around uh, Evan Lowe, uh, an assembly member representing Silicon Valley. His ideal uh, idea to look at a universal basic income. California, basically this is the state level government um, you can kind of think of them as like the House of Representatives for, for the state of California. And so he has created this bill, AB 2712. So make sure you keep an eye out for this 2712. Here's the bill. It's very, very basic right now, right? But uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave the link. In, uh, to the bill and in, in the description below in case you know, you're know you interested in keeping track of it. This was brand spanking new, February 20. So it's a very, very basic thing, but it has all of the uh, provisions, right, that, that we saw in UBI. And this is kind of like, I think, one of the first attempts at, by the state to push UBI into kind of the political conversation. So right now, this bill is very, very fresh, and uh, it's just been introduced. So we don't know what's going to happen to it yet, but there will come a time when they have to vote on it. And when that time comes around, uh, I'm assuming that Evan and uh, a lot of, lot of his supporters are going to be asking people 
to uh, call their representatives to be like, hey, uh, yeah, you re- represent me in district something something. Uh, please vote yes on this UBI bill. And uh, this is where the Yang Yang can really shine because if we can get enough people to call up their representatives, they're, they do keep track of this stuff. For individuals whose jobs have been replaced by artificial intelligence. Now, this is very, very early days. There hasn't even been a committee hearing on this yet. So don't expect that this is going to move uh, really, really quickly, but it will engender a great deal of discussion and interest. And I think it goes to some of the concerns that a lot of policymakers have around bias, but also labor impact and workforce impact as well.